Mark, your second 6-5 thriller uh, in this tournament. And my goodness me, you put your fans through the mill on that one. Value for money, Rob, I call it. Value for money. <laughs> Look, at, I'm very fortunate to be sitting here on the right end of it again, but I'm proud of myself that I gave myself a chance to win from 3-1 down and played some good snooker. And if I'd have lost the deciding frame, Look, so be it. Uh, would have lost to the better man on the day and uh, I'm just happy to be on the right end of it. After he fluked the red in the decider, did you expect him to go for that brown to middle right? Uh, look, I know how aggressive Kurt is and who might have say that he shouldn't have went for it, but maybe that is why he's not quite the top player I believe he should be right now. A uh, bit of an experience. You know, he should have probably chipped the brown to the side rail, tried to get a snooker behind blue or pink. I think that was the shot I was expecting him to play. Obviously, if he pots the brown, he's a hero and he wins 6-5 and looks great, but look, that was the only way I felt I could win the match at that time, and obviously I was happy to see it come off the far knuckle and sit for an easy clearance. What is it about your game that, that you you are so often able to come through those those tight deciders, not just here at the UK, but all over the world? I think it's just my belief. Uh, I believe in my ability, regardless of what the scoreline is. So I, the, what I always try and teach my stepson, Robbie, when he's playing is, can you win the next frame? And regardless of what the scoreline is, I always say to myself, can I win the next frame? And evidently, it is yes, you can. Now, you may not always do it, but I always have that positive thought in my head. Does it make a difference almost subconsciously when you're playing at a venue and in a tournament where you know you've gone all the way to the final and you know you can win these triple crowns, which you did at the Masters last Jan? Yeah, look, all that you know, builds confidence, but just the amount of matches I've won this season already, you know, without winning a tournament, you no know, brings confidence in itself. Uh, and I feel my game's not far away. I've said it for a number of tournaments now. I, I feel like a, a win's just around the corner. I'd love it to be here this week, but if it's not, I'll go to Scotland. Really fancy my chances, knowing my game's in good order. And your quarter of the draw is opening up a little bit with no Judd Trump, although you can argue it the other way that Nigel Bond thoroughly deserves his place uh, still in the championship. And Gary Wilson had four tonnes on the bounce. So both of those guys will fancy it, but... The world number one is not in your quarter of the draw. Yeah, look, I always look at draws you know, at the start, but then I don't pay much attention after that because, you know, people can lose on any given day, as Judd's shown. There were 13 months he's had. No one expected Nigel to win. Probably only Nigel thought he could win. Uh, but I think that's just sport in general. You can't look at too, too closely at draws because you just never know who's... If you're expecting to play the world number one in the quarters and you're not, maybe you're not ready for who you've actually got. Well done today and we will see you in the last eight. Cheers Rob, thanks mate.